time you use an app or turn on your computer, you're experiencing the wonderful benefits of code. All those visuals that you see on your screen are the end components of a series of commands that uses hashtags, numbers, letters, symbols, all strategically placed to bring the visual, audio, and video components of your computer screen and your speakers to life. Without code, there'd be no computers. Imagine that. The world today is growing at a lightning fast pace. And as a result, some businesses are looking to upgrade, others are looking to innovate, and still others are looking to create social change for a better world. And computer programmers are helping to bring their dream to a reality. Computer programmers are in high demand but short supply. By the year 2020, there will be 1.4 million jobs in computer programming, making it the fastest growing occupation ever. And on average, coders get paid 75% more than the national median salary. Doesn't sound too bad to me. Globally, though, only 10% of computer programmers are female. And although us females have shown a natural inclination towards computer programming, because we're socially gifted and mathematically inclined, <laughs> we have yet to embrace this field. And I think the reason we have yet to embrace this field is because we haven't seen it as an opportunity. But the world needs more female coders. We women tend to view technology through the lens of social innovation. We dare to ask the big questions like, how will what I create make a better future for other women, for children, for families, and for my community? And for girls living in oppressed countries, learning to code may just be the ticket that they need to escape oppression. And they don't even have to leave their house. My father, who was studying to become a doctor, suddenly died when I was four years old, leaving behind my mom, who at the time was 21, with three kids, ages four, five, and six. And the Pakistani educational equivalent to a junior high school education. She didn't speak the language, she had never had a job before in her life. And in the midst of mourning and tragedy, she had to figure out a way to survive. So my mom, she did it all. Her first job was at a fast food restaurant. She worked two jobs. And then, after she saved up enough money, she went to beauty school to learn to become a hairdresser. And after she saved up yet a little bit more money, she started her own beauty salon. And through a little bit of hard work, she sold that beauty salon. And with that money, she started another business. And then she sold that business. In the matter of two decades, she had started and sold two successful companies. And I asked my mom, Mom, what were you thinking? And how did you just keep going? And she said, I wasn't thinking. <laughs> I didn't have time to think. I saw an opportunity and I went for it. As a child, I studied my mom. I was dazzled by the fact that she was able to create something out of seemingly nothing. And I was so inspired that I wanted to do the same thing for myself. So I started early on. At the age of eight, I did it all. I cleaned houses, I washed cars, I sold homemade greeting cards. I washed clothes, dogs, and cats too, seriously, not easy. <laughs> Every summer, my friends and I, we would come up with some new scheme. One summer, we decided that we were gonna go to the second-hand store, 
pick up all of their accessories, and then resell those accessories door to door. And as I began to immerse myself in this world, I realized that for me, being an entrepreneur wasn't an option, it was a necessity. Because the thing is, to be a successful entrepreneur is about achieving a purpose that's greater than yourself. It's because you have something bigger than you to give back to the world. So now you have to live life without limitations because it's the only way you'll know how to survive and the only way you'll know what you're made of. And for me, technology has been such a powerful tool. It's helped me break down a long list of barriers, like racial, cultural, and class barriers. And if it can help me here in the land of the free, imagine what it could do for the countless girls living all over the world with less. You see, opportunity is everywhere. And for somebody who knows how to code, they have limitless opportunities to be creative, to be an entrepreneur, and to create something out of seemingly nothing. Anyone can code. Coding doesn't care about where you're from or who you are. You can do it from home, in your pajamas, in your shorts. You could wear a hat, you could wear a hijab. You can be a boy, you can be a girl, you could be white, you could be black, you could be anything in between. You don't even have to know how to speak English because computer programming is a universal language in and of itself. We're living in a time right now where dedication and intentions are taking us farther than we've ever dreamt of going. They're creating a cultural shift Imagine what we could do with the right intentions and the power of technology. I call this time that we're in right now a tech renaissance. It's a rebirth of ideas and ideology, all powered by technology. Picture this. It's 3 a.m. in India. A little girl no more than 15 years old, is stooped over on her dimly lit computer, carelessly eating biscuits, effortlessly plugging away at her computer, while the rest of her family sleeps. She's working. She makes more money in one night than her mother and her father combined in a week. She's a coder, She's an entrepreneur. She's an inspiration. Imagine what we could do with the countless girls in Afghanistan, Iran, Iraq, Uganda, Kenya, and on if we taught them how to code. All they need is a computer and an internet connection. And they can code for a better life for themselves. But more importantly, I think they can code for a better life for us all. Yes. Code can solve real problems. There are hackathons out there right now that are aiming to solve big problems through code, like curing cancer, autism, famine, solving the sanitation issue. We can solve all of these problems keystroke by keystroke. Only 5% of women make up tech founders. And yet, there's endless opportunity. I lose sleep thinking about the possibilities of only if we had more women. What if the 4% of homes in Afghanistan that have computers and internet had girls coding on them? What if the 8% of homes in Sri Lanka had the same? We're living in a time right now where our dedications, our hard work, and our intentions are taking us farther than we've ever dreamt of going. Why? Because for the first time ever, the world is an equal opportunity employer. And technology doesn't discriminate. Anyone can code. 
I have two girls, Noor and Layla. And my hope for my two girls is the same hope that I have for girls all over the world. To change the world through code. Because there isn't a more powerful tool out there right now that can help us solve every single problem we're experiencing. I want to set example for my girls, like my mom set an example for me, that with hard work and dedication, we can do anything we want. To recognize a good opportunity when we see one, and to know that the only limitation that we have is the one that we put on ourselves. In the very near future, girls are going to outnumber boys. So ladies, we better start thinking of a game plan. Let the power, art, and skill of computer programming be our key to a new and prosperous future. Let it be our typewriter into the tech space. Ladies, raise your hand. There's a lot of us in here. Can you please repeat after me? <laughs> I promise to open doors. I promise to shatter ceilings. I promise to learn how to code. <laughs> Thank you.